Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to get started with streaming OpenAI responses in a Django app. So this here is a running Django app, and I can ask a question here, how are you? And send, and we'll see the response get streamed, right? So this didn't appear all at once, instead, it was streamed. So let me show a longer uh, example. Describe Python in 500 words. And when I hit send, we'll see it stream the response word by word as it comes in instead of waiting for the whole thing to be generated and then displaying everything at once. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. And let's get started in this example of using OpenAI in Django. Okay, so to start, let me show you what I have already. I have a views.py where I am importing OpenAI and I'm creating a client. So I'll use this to send the actual request over to the OpenAI API. I also have my environment variable set up to have the OpenAI key. So that's done in the background. I have a urls.py that has the index here. And then finally, I have a template index.html. And that just generates this page, um, this text input, the send button, but it doesn't actually do anything when I hit send. So that's what I'm going to work on in this video. So before I get to the form, let me just show you the process of actually streaming something from OpenAI. And then once that's ready, then I can show you how to integrate it into your HTML template as a response that the user can get after they type in something. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to create a function that will take some question from the user and return a streaming response from OpenAI. So I'm just going to define the function here. This would be better placed in another file since this isn't technically a view, but I'm just gonna put it here in views.py since this is going to be a simple video. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna call this generate response and it's gonna take in some question. Right, some question that the user passes in eventually. And what I wanna do here is I'm going to create a variable called stream, and this will be the result of calling the OpenAI API. So to do that, I'm gonna use the client that I have defined here on line four, and I'm gonna call chat and then completions. So this is what I need to call in the API to have an actual conversation with the AI, uh, chat GPT like you know, GPT-4, GPT-4.0, whatever they have at the moment, uh, this will interface with that API. So client.chat.completions and then create. And then I want to specify a model. So in this case, I'll just say GPT-4. This can be any model that's available. This is always changing. So feel free to pick whatever model works well for your situation. GPT-4 isn't even the latest at the time of recording this video, but it's good enough. And then what I wanna do is I wanna define some messages. So the AI doesn't have any kind of memory. So when you wanna have a back and forth conversation with the AI, you append to the messages list and you send the entire conversation history over to the AI. I'm not gonna do anything complicated like that in this video. It's just gonna be like one question and one answer. So because of that, I can just basically uh, hard code messages to have one dictionary in it. And the role is going to be user. So this is the user message. And then the content is going to be whatever the question is that they pass in. Then finally, to make this stream, I just need to do stream equals true. That way, OpenAI will return the response as a stream, like as the AI generates it, as opposed to just waiting until everything is done and returning all that at once. So with stream done, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna make this function a generator. So I want to have it return each chunk of the stream as it appears. So what I can do is I can loop over the stream here and then yield the individual pieces. So if you're not too familiar with generators in Python, I suggest you look into them, but here I'll use a really simple example so you'll be able to see what's going on. So I'm gonna say for a chunk in stream, so just imagine stream is something that's constantly coming and at some point is going to end, but as long as the stream is open, uh, this loop will continue to be active. And what I wanna say is if chunk.choices, so this is the format that OpenAI is gonna return the response in. So if chunk.choices, uh, the first thing, delta.content, so this is the new content, so the delta, meaning the change in the content before. So this is the new content that is coming over the stream. So for each piece of this, we're gonna say if it's not none, so if there's like a new piece of content available, we want to return it. So I'm just going to yield the same thing here. So this is like the new content, right? So let's say the content was like, my name is Anthony, and then each word was a chunk. So my will come in, and we'll see it here, this would be my, and then it would yield the word my and then a space will come in and it would yield the, the character space. And then name, 
will yield name and so on. So that's all that's happening here and it will continue to yield things until the stream closes. So the stream will close when OpenAI has nothing left to return, meaning the AI has generated the complete response. So I've made this into a generator. Now let me go ahead and create a view that will take this generator and return it. So I'll call this answer and this will take in a request. And for now, I'm not going to take in any uh, user information. I'm just going to hard code it. So I'm going to say message equals describe Django in 300 words. Okay, so that's the message that I want to uh, send over the question that I want to ask. So how about this to make it a question? Can you describe Django in 300 words? That's what I want the question to be, although it obviously doesn't have to be a question. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a response. But this response needs to be created because this is going to be a streaming response. So let me just return response here. And what I need to do is I need to import something from Django. So what I'll say is from Django.http.response, I want to import something called streaming HTTP response. So this will allow Django to return a response that will remain open until the stream is complete. So I need to use the streaming HTTP response instead of the typical response that you use in Django. So I'm gonna take this class and the first argument to this class is going to be the function that has a generator in it. So uh, this generate response. So we just need to call it as the first thing and then the message gets passed to generate response here. And then we can give it a status, I'll just say 200, and then a content type. So the content type in this case, I'll just do text plain because I'm not streaming like any videos or anything like that, it's just plain text that I'm streaming. So I have that and I'm returning the response. So now let's see if I can get it to return. So let me go over to the app and I will go to slash answer. And actually before I do that, I need to create a URL. So what I'll do is path, and then we'll have answer here and views.answer. Okay, so now let me go to slash answer and hit enter and it's gonna start loading. And it is a weird thing in my browser that happens where um, the first part of the response doesn't come back. But as you can see, like it starts streaming in the middle. So I'm not quite sure why that happens, why it doesn't start at the first word. Um, but you can still see that the streaming works. If I just refresh this again, um, we'll see that the streaming starts somewhere in the middle and like each word is appearing uh, as it's being streamed. So uh, here's just another example. Right, so this demonstrates that the streaming part works, but of course this isn't the approach that you want to happen in the app. You want the stream output to appear somewhere in the template. So let's go back over to views.py, and before I move on to the template, what I wanna do is I want to import django.views.decorators.csrf. I'm gonna import CRSF exempt, and I'm just doing this because I wanna send a post request to this answer view without having to worry about the CSRF token. If that's important in your situation, then you can go ahead and use it. But in mine, I'm just gonna mark it as exempt here. So now let me go over to the template, index.html, and let's take a look at what we have. So if I go down here to the script, we see that I have the body, the submit button, and the input already as variables, so I can access those elements. And I just need to write the code to uh, work when the user wants to do something. So just to remind you, let me go back to the home page, And we see here we have this text input. So what I wanna do is whenever the user types in something and hits send, I want to have it send that message over to OpenAI, so it has to go to my backend and then from the backend it goes to OpenAI. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add a click listener on the submit button. So what I'll do is submit underscore button dot add event listener and I'm looking for a click event. I want this to be async because I'm doing streaming so I need to make this an async function that gets called uh, when the click happens. And then inside I can do e.preventDefault so it doesn't try to submit a form like normal. And then what I wanna do is I want to send a fetch request to that answer endpoint with the message. So what I'll do here is I'll say uh, const response. So I'm gonna use this response in a second. And remember this is going to be async because it's streaming. So it's gonna wait for each chunk. So I need to await this and I'll do fetch and then I'm gonna send a fetch request to the answer endpoint. Uh, and then for the 
properties here. It's going to be a post request, uh, the headers. Uh, I'm going to send JSON, so we'll do content type is going to be uh, application slash JSON. And then for the body, I'm going to do JSON.stringify, and I'm going to send the message over with input.value. So input is that text input, and it's going to send it as a message in JSON over to the answer endpoint. So let me go over to views and just modify this so the views will uh, pick up the JSON information. So I will import JSON. And then in here, I'm going to do uh, data equals JSON.load S, and then take the request.body to convert it to Python objects. And then the message will be data message. Okay. Other than that, everything else will work the same. So now that I have this response, I have to stream the output in a way. So what I wanna do is I wanna take the response and I want to append the output onto the body. So let's do that now. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get the reader from the response. So the reader is going to be the thing that I can read from to get like the next value um, from the response. So that's easy. I can do const reader and then response.body. So this is something already on the response and then we just call get reader. And then what I wanna do is I wanna have some output. So this output is going to be put into a particular place in the HTML here in the body using this variable here. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna loop endlessly until there's nothing left to read. So the first thing I need to do is I need to read the next value from the reader. So the way you do this is you can define two values, uh, done and value. So done will be a Boolean saying whether or not the reader is done, and the value will be whatever the value the reader is. So I'm going to await reader.read, and this will get the next value. And then at the bottom here, I can say if done is true, meaning there is nothing left in the reader, I just run a return. So this will exit out of this function completely. So here after getting value, what I want to do is I want to add to the output whatever that value is. And to do that, I need to use the text decoder to decode the value because it's not going to be something that I can read uh, right away. I have to instantiate text decoder. So this is something that's included. Decoder. And then decode, and then I can pass in the value here. So this will then be something that's human readable, and I can do body.innerHTML equals output. Okay, and then that's it. So just as a recap, response comes in, I can get the reader from the response, then I'm gonna loop forever. I'm going to wait for the next value out of the reader. That will return a value of done and the actual value. I'm gonna take the actual value decoded, add it to the output, and then I'm gonna put the output on the body as HTML. And then if the reader says it's done, I'm just gonna exit out of the function and it gets out of this while loop and it gets out of the function here. So that should be it. So let's go over and give it a shot. So let's say describe Django in 200 words. Let's see. So I'm sending that and we see the output comes here. It's being streamed as text and we see it on the same page as our uh, input. So this is more what you want for the user experience part. So obviously your template and your design can be anything that you want. You can just inject the text data anywhere that makes sense. You can put styles and stuff like that. Um, but the idea is the streaming output appears in the same place as the input to the AI. And now if there's some markdown, so as an example, um, describe Django in 200 words, use markdown to format. Let's see if I can get it to generate some markdown. So yeah, this is some markdown syntax, the uh, square brackets here and the parens. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna use a library to parse that markdown. So there are a few different libraries in JavaScript to parse markdown. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add one that I'm familiar with, marked. And to use it, all I have to do is take the output and parse it as markdown. So I can do marked.parse and then just pass output to it. And that's it. It will convert the output markdown to the appropriate HTML tags and it will display it when it shows up. So let me refresh and I'll say, uh, give me pros and cons of Django. 
and then format your response in Markdown. And we'll see if it gives me something that can be formatted. Yeah, so we see this is bold here, this is bold, it has the numbers, and this is all because it's formatting everything in Markdown. So if you wanted to take the, the Markdown format and display it, this is how easy it is to do. So that's it for this video. That's all I want to show you. Just a really simple um, way of streaming OpenAI responses. Obviously, this can get a lot more complicated. Um, you can use ASGI uh, to make sure that this streaming response doesn't block the rest of your users. Um, but if you have a small app with only a few users, then streaming like this wouldn't be a big deal. Um, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.